So we'll add another survey now, choosing one of the other options. We've already covered the critical incidents type survey. For this survey, we're going to choose the ATTLS. Um, we sometimes just call it ATLS. I'm not sure whether that's correct or not. But this is basically a survey to look at the participants' attitudes to thinking and learning. So it's the attitudes to thinking and learning survey. And basically, it tries to map out how much of a separate knower or a connected knower people are. Um, connected knowers tend to be more cooperative, find learning fun, congenial, want to build on the ideas of others, whereas separate knowers tend to be more critical and perhaps argumentative in the way they approach forums, for example. So uh, an interesting survey type. We'll add the, or choose that particular survey type. We will put a description in. Um, it's always a good idea to, to give a more full description than that, perhaps telling people why they're being asked to complete this survey, how it's going to be used, etc. And even perhaps some guidance on, on how to approach it. Obviously, we need a name as well. In this case, I'm just going to use survey. There's actually nothing else to set here apart from that survey type. The common module settings, restrict access and tags are all sort of common to most modules. So let's save and return to the course, turn our editing off, and we can see here that uh, the survey type, the the ATLS type survey, Attitudes Towards Thinking and Learning. And this is a, a fairly straightforward uh, exercise for the participants to complete. There are 20 questions where we're asking the, the learners to think about how they interact within their courses. And they can choose between uh, how, how strongly they agree with each of these statements from strongly uh, agree through to strongly uh, disagree so so they can you know they, they would choose these they have to choose something in every section they then come down to the bottom click here to continue and um, they would then see the the thank you for completing that I'll get an error there because all of these questions need answering but let's presume that I'm a student and I've finished those so let's have a look at what a student would see so here we are as a student, logged in as Sylvester, taking this course. Sylvester can see the new survey option there. As we expect, some instructions on how and why to complete this particular activity, and a reminder that all questions have to be answered. So I'm going to just very, com very quickly complete these so we can see what happens at the end as a student. Obviously, we would hope that students are a little bit more thoughtful than I'm being right here, uh, rather random there, and click here to continue. Thanks for answering the survey, Sylvester, and then click on continue. Now again, as with the critical incidents survey, where Sylvester can, can revisit that to see what he originally said to those five questions, with the ATLS type survey, Sylvester will see that well he's completed he's the only person to have completed this so far um, and the graph will show his gradings or his responses as opposed to the to the class the wider class now clearly there's there's no one else in this class at the moment but what we have are the scales between strongly disagree and strongly agree and also the, the responses split between how much of a connected knower and a separate knower you are. So we might see here, I mean, that was totally random, clearly, but, you know, this could indicate that Sylvester is, is perhaps more, slightly more of a connected learner than a separate learner. But let's have a look from the teacher's perspective. Here we are back in the teacher view, logged in as myself. Um, so the only person to have completed that survey is that one student so far. So we actually have a, a similar survey set up here. Same type of survey, that, that 20 questions is standard. As a teacher, if I now go and view that, 
Um, obviously, I, I wouldn't complete this myself, but importantly, I can view the responses. So I can click here to view the five survey responses. So first of all, we see this very simplistic graph, which is just showing, you know, the uh, the the average, if you like, between uh, across what people have answered within that survey. And that's just what we call the summary view. So that's that first view. Now, perhaps more interestingly, when we look at the scales view, we'll begin to see the range of of uh, there's probably a great statistical term for this but we can see the kind of highs and lows and the the, the breadth of of um, variation across those answers we can see that you know most people are around here but maybe in this question and certainly over here there's there's a bit of a dip and we can see how that relates to these different areas how how we are interacting whether we're thinking with people whether we enjoy hearing other people's opinions and so on so uh, quite interesting to look at that graph and then the same for the separate learning and again we can see perhaps something here that might make us want to analyze or think about this in a little more detail arguing and putting on trial but well, these are interesting concepts um, we can click on there to actually go and look at that particular question or those questions that relate to, to that area so I can then drill down and look at how these answers were put together. Now, do bear in mind that I have five uh, test accounts, if you like, or five test students completing this. So if you had 15 or 50, then you would probably be seeing something a bit more, uh, a bit more variety than this. And obviously uh, a little bit more uh, realistic in terms of the information that's in there. So we can go from the scales and we can click on the individual bars to, to see more details. Or in fact, we can go to the uh, all the questions and look at everything that was answered there. Um, we can also drill down, as, as with the other survey types, to a particular student and see how they actually compare to the, uh, to, to the wider class. And finally, as expected, uh, we can download all that information for further analysis or for archiving or for discussion with the rest of the course team for example and we can download that in a variety of formats so quite an interesting experience to set up a atl's type survey in your course um, tends to work better obviously with with older learners or doesn't work so well with very young learners um, you really have to be able to reflect on on your experiences and your attitudes within the course and to your own learning as well.